Hello and welcome to the 2024 Baking Challenge. It is week number 25 and in honor of Tiana's Bayou Adventure opening at Disney World, we are going right to New Orleans for some classic beignets. So grab your ingredients and let's bake. apologize in advance if you hear any yelling. The kiddo is playing a game with his friends and it can get a little loud. So the ingredient list is kind of long, but it's not complicated. This is all stuff that you probably already have in your refrigerator, in your pantry. You can make this by hand, you can use your mixer, or in my case, I'm going with the bread machine because I'm going to set this and then walk away from it. I have other things to do. I will apologize in advance because this is a two day bake. Today we are making the dough and then it's gonna need to sit in the fridge overnight. It's going to slowly expand in the fridge. So you're not having beignets today. You're gonna to get them tomorrow though. We're just gonna start the process today. If you are using a mixer or doing it by hand, it doesn't really matter what um, order you put your ingredients in. If you are using a bread machine, this is a Hamilton Beach bread maker. I love this thing. I use it weekly. If you are using a bread machine, your wet ingredients are going to go in first. The last thing you're going to put in is going to be your yeast. Okay. So for wet ingredients, we have a half a cup of milk. It needs to be room temperature. We have a half a cup of water, also room temperature. We have two tablespoons of melted butter. We have one egg, one large egg, yolk and all, whole thing. We have a teaspoon of vanilla, right? We get one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna add a little extra because you know I love my vanilla. All right, now your dry ingredients. Four cups of flour. That is a lot of flour. Um, gosh, I'm gonna get a scoop for this because I really uh, think that if I try to dump it all in at once, we're gonna have a problem. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this around in here. You're not gonna be able to see your wet ingredients if you're using a bread machine by the time we're done with this, and that's okay. This machine is gonna do all of the mixing and proofing for you. That is one of the reasons I love it so much. We go through a lot of pita bread um, in this house. We make pita bread every single week, and I use the bread machine or honey oat. Wheat bread is always good with the bread machine. Sorry, I want to make sure I don't make a giant mess all over the counter. Okay. I'm going to make a little divot in the top. Um, we also have a fourth a cup of granulated sugar that just kind of goes around the outside if you're using a bread machine. And then in that little divot, two teaspoons of instant yeast. So there we go. Now, if you're not using a bread machine, you are going to mix this until it forms a smooth, cohesive dough. If you are using a bread machine, you're gonna put it in on the dough setting and you're gonna walk away. Just walk away from it. I got something on my hand, it's vanilla, that's okay. Once you're done mixing, once your dough comes together, it's nice and soft and smooth, you're gonna let it rise for about an hour, okay? Just one hour, you know the drill. Put it in a greased bowl, give it a little cover. It's not necessarily going to be doubled in bulk. I wanted to double check that. Um, you're going to gently deflate the dough after that one hour, okay? Gently does not mean punching it down like we do a lot of times. It's just gonna be gently pressing on it, just a couple pokes on either side, and you're gonna watch that dough deflate, okay? Once that's done, you need to have a greased plastic bag, a big one, or a big greased bowl, 
because you're going to transfer your ball of dough into that. You're going to cover it and you're going to put it in the refrigerator overnight, which is just the waiting is so hard, but hopefully this is going to be worth it. So fingers crossed. Happy mixing, and I'll see you tomorrow morning when we rock out some beignets. The recipe does say that you can leave this dough in the refrigerator for up to two days, so you don't have to make it the night right before. You can make it a couple of days in advance. So, yay. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. One more word of warning about bread machines. If you are using a bread machine to mix and proof your dough and it's not going to be baking in here, set a timer somewhere else. If you're walking away from your bread machine, look and see how much time it's going to take to complete the mixing and the rising process. Set a timer to come and check on it halfway through and then maybe 10, 15 minutes before the process is finished because sometimes, sometimes your yeast is really active and you do not want to have your dough rise over the edge of the pan. Once that dough gets on the heating element that's at the bottom of your bread maker, it's very, very hard to clean up, almost impossible. Ask me how I know I've done it before and this is why this is the second bread machine that I have owned because it's almost impossible to clean off the heating elements without wrecking the machines. So make sure that you're being cautious, you're setting a timer, and you're checking on your machine as you go. Okay friends, it is the next day. It's later than I wanted it to be, but it was a really busy morning too. So I grabbed the dough out of the fridge. You are going to lightly flour your surface, and you're gonna turn this out. <laughs> that was that was amazing. Um, now we are going to roll this out to 14 by 10 size, okay? 14 by 10 size. See, it's kind of deflating there a little bit. It is a solid, hefty dough. Um, 14 by 10 rectangle, and then we are going to um, then we're going to cut it into two inch squares. So it's going to take a while, I fear. I fear that this is gonna be a little bit of a process. Um, now, my the mat that I use here is, um, <laughs> it has measurements on it. So that's kind of what I'm going off of here. Um, I just, mine's also a little backwards, so it has inches across the top. And instead of inches on this side, so it's one and one, it's centimeters on this side, which is a little frustrating to me, but that's all right. We're gonna, we're gonna make this happen. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is, this is a dense, cold dough. <clears throat> Oof. You are gonna need a skillet. Now the recipe calls for an electric skillet, says that that's preferable. Um, I don't have one of those. You need at least a 10 inch skillet and it has to be how deep? Three fourths of an inch deep. So I think I'm just gonna use cast iron for this. My cast iron skillet heats really well because we're gonna fill that sucker up with oil and um, I'm gonna go get my other rolling pin. I feel like I can put a little bit more oomph into it with the, with the rolling pin with the handles. So, yeah, let's see how this is gonna go. Yeah, see, I can, can roll a little easier with this one. Something to grasp with. And this is not a delicate dough, so you don't have to be, you don't have to be careful with it. Whew. It is arm day here in the kitchen. And you may have to trim off some dough just to make sure that you have that rectangle shape. And that's okay. Oh my gosh, this is, Whew. 
kind of makes me wish I had one of those uh, dough sheeters in here and I could just put it through that. You guys have seen those? <sighs> All right, we'll come back to it when it's the proper shape. Okay, now I have cut the edges off of mine to try to get that rectangle, but I'm saving these because I've never done this before. I've never fried a dough. So these are gonna be my test pieces. Now we're doing two inch strips. So I have my handy little kitchen ruler out and I am just making my lines with my pizza cutter here. And then I'm going back over like so. And then I guess this is gonna be pretty much in half, so I'm just gonna eyeball it because that's what we do here sometimes. And it's a little wonky, but that's okay. Now, same thing. We're basically doing two inch squares. So, And it's okay, they're not going to be perfect by any means. And I apologize again, because the kid is gaming again. So, all right. There's all of my squares, except for this one, which did not get cut all the way through. So let me just take care of that, okay. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna get the skillet going. Okay, you're gonna need some tongs and a plate covered with some paper towels. And your oil needs to get up to 360 degrees, 360 degrees, okay? So, thermometer, okay? Don't let your oil get too hot. We are not having an emergency room visits today. Not on my watch, okay? Please be careful. Can you drop these in a deep fryer? I don't know, the instructions do not say. Um, I also don't know if they can go in an air fryer, although uh, with enough of these little ends left, I'm absolutely gonna try that. So I will check back in and let you know how that goes after we get these done. The way that the directions say to do. Um, again, be checking your oil, okay? You do not want it to get too hot. I'm using my rechargeable digital thermometer here. I'm at two something now and the oil is sizzly. So um, I'm, I'm at 270. So I'm tempted to drop something in and see how that goes because it's really hot. But I, I know I have to wait. <laughs> Waiting is not easy. Don't rush it. Okay, we have reached 360 degrees. It says to drop like five of these in at a time. Be careful not to splash, please, please, please. Um, try to keep them separated. Oh, it's very much bubbly. I'm only gonna do like five here. Um, and I'm gonna pull my, this one out. Give it a little shake. Okay, now that they're all up to the top, we start counting a minute. Once we get to that minute mark, we are going to flip them over. There, see they're poofing up and getting all pillowy. I'm gonna kinda keep them moving around. Almost there. Um, my oil might be up a little high, so I'm gonna turn this down. I really do not love this uh, skillet or this stove top. Okay, I'm gonna flip mine because they are getting awfully brown, a little too brown. Okay. Um, so one minute. <laughs> they are happily just boating along here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a second round, I guess. I have a really big skillet, so I feel like that's okay for me to add a few more. As long as they're able to float to the surface here. Yeah, these are golden brown. I'm going to take them out. Hopefully they're done inside. 
Mine are maybe a little too golden brown. Almost burned. <laughs> I need to, that minute goes a little faster than I thought. But you can see they are very pillowy. I'm going a little lighter on this batch here because I feel like I'm just overdoing them. Ah, there we go. Getting a little bit of popping now. I do not like frying things. I hate frying things. It fills me with so much anxiety. All right, pulling these out. I feel like this is definitely going faster than a minute. Um, and I need to add another layer to my paper towels. <laughs> Go ahead and turn these. See, that's more of a golden brown, I think. I feel like that's, oh boy, this is a mess. Okay, let your beignets cool a little bit. Grab yourself a sifter like this, a strainer, mesh. Put a little bit of powdered sugar in there and just gently tap over the top of your beignets and you're going to end up with all kinds of powdered sugar bliss. Serve it with a strong coffee. That's how they do it in New Orleans. I don't drink coffee, but that's okay. All right, let's, uh, I guess I'm gonna give these a try. Oh, mine need to cool down a little bit more. <laughs> I have the air fryer heating up for our little experiment, but I cannot wait anymore because these smell great. They look really good. Uh, this one's still a little hot. This one feels better. Mmm. These are soft. The dough has a little bit of a hit, hint of sweetness. Um, they're pillowy. They kind of pull apart, like break apart on the inside. That dusting of powdered sugar is just perfection. They're very crunchy on the outside. Um, I love these. <laughs> this is another winning recipe from King Arthur. Absolutely. Two thumbs up. These are really great and it's going to be very hard to share them with anyone. So I threw the rest of these in the air fryer at 360 degrees for about six minutes. Um, kind of gave them a little shake. They are pale. So here's the air fryer. And here is the oil. They taste fine. Um, I don't think it's anything to write home about. It has a slightly different texture on the inside and it doesn't have that crunch when you bite into it. Other than that, I mean, it's still a sugar bread. So you do with that what you will. If you want to try the air fryer method, go for it. I would rather do it in the oil and I don't like frying things. So there you go. Well, I'm covered in powdered sugar and shame, and that wraps up yet another week of the 2024 baking challenge. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button below, if you want to follow along and bake along with me, I put these videos out every single Saturday morning between seven and nine. You should also head over to the Facebook page. The link is below. Uh, every Wednesday morning, I'm going to put out the ingredient list and the name of what we will be making. That way you can get your shopping done. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go eat some more of these and I'll see you next week. Bye.